Alright, here we are in Revit 2013, and this tutorial is to show you guys how to set up your wall types for your house project. Um, I just have a basic floor plan laid out here for you, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up three wall types. One is going to be your exterior walls, one's going to be your interior walls, and the third one is the wall type that's going to be the barrier between your garage and your house because it's not really exterior but it needs to be thicker to allow for insulation because you don't want to have to heat your garage as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into your wall command and as you guys already know you have all these different selections to choose from from the uh, default library in Revit uh, but none of them are really for true residential structures uh, to make them more accurate what you're gonna want to do is create your own and to do that uh, you can start with any wall type, it doesn't really matter which one, and you're going to click on Edit Type. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the exterior wall type. So in order to do that, we're going to click on Duplicate to start making our own. And whenever you do that, I'm just going to, as I usually do, turn my caps lock on, and I'm going to call this just very simply Exterior Wall. And hit OK. And now you can see that the type is exterior wall, which will come up over here after we're all done and hit OK. And to change what that wall is actually made of, right down here under your properties, you have the structure uh, row, and you can click edit there. And you can start to edit the structure uh, on that particular wall type. And if you reference your uh, typical wall construction handout that I've given you in class, I'm actually going to re- uh, redo that handout because after doing this I see that there's a couple errors on the one I initially gave you. Um, but for the most part it's pretty much going to be the same as the or initial handout. What we're going to do is we're going to first of all add all the material items into this little area here and then modify them to be what they should be. As you can see there's an exterior side as well as an interior side and if you look at your handout um, it actually shows, the, the old one shows six items, but there should be five. So I'm just going to click insert four more times to add all five of my items. You can see that there are uh, kind of these gray bands in here that say core boundary. And what that represents is the core structure of the wall. And the only thing that's going to be the core structure in the wall um, for this particular wall type is just going to be the wood studs as well as the uh, sheeting that goes on the outside of the studs. So I'm going to click on this last item and I'm going to move it down. On the interior side this is going to be our gypsum wall board. So I'm going to click on this down button and you can see it's moved it down in the order of things. And I'm go going to click on this outside most material and I'm going to click up to move it outside. Click on this one as well and move it up. And that's just going to leave two materials in the middle which as I already stated this is going to be our wood stud layer and then our sheeting layer. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is change the function of these various materials that make up our particular wall type. Uh, the function of the interior most wall type is going to be a finish. It's what you actually see in your house. So I'm going to click on finish one. Our exterior most function is going to be a finish as well because that's what you see on the outside of your house. I'm going to click on finish two our next layer in is actually like a paper it's called a vapor barrier uh, and if you guys have ever seen a wall a uh, house under construction a lot of times you see what looks like a paper on the outside of the house and that is what is just under the siding layer uh, and that kind of acts as like a wind barrier for that house so you come down and you want to make that a membrane layer for the function so I'm going to click on that uh, both of the core boundary structures uh, both the stud layer and the uh, sheeting are going to be structure so we're going to leave that as structure and next thing we're going to change is the thickness right now most of these are zero the ones that we added and the original one by default is eighth inch um, you guys should already know that your drywall your gypsum wall board is going to be a half inch so I'm going to highlight that and just type in 0.5 inches and hit enter you can see it converts that to one half the decimal it's not a wrap so I'm going to uncheck this it's not a structural material, um, but these two that I'm going to change right now are structural materials, so I'm going to check on these little 
uh, boxes. I guess it only lets you do one, so make sure that's your stud layer. And for your exterior walls, your stud layer is going to be five and a half inches. So again, I'm going to highlight that thickness area, type in 5.5 inches, and you can see it converts it to the fraction, the five and a half. Our sheeting is going to be a half inch, so type in 0.5 inches, enter. Our membrane, our membrane layer, like I said, it's basically the thickness of paper, so uh, that's kind of um, trivial here, so we're just going to leave that at zero inches. And your, f your finished material, um, this is going to be up to you. It can be a siding, it can be brick, and that thickness is going to vary. I would say for brick, you want to put your thickness as three inches, and if it's just going to be siding, you can just make your thickness half inch, which is what I'm going to do right here. So I'm going to type in one half inch, enter. And this is not a wrap, so I'm going to uncheck that. But I do want to leave wrap uh, checked for my membrane layer. Now the last step in this is going through and actually choosing the materials that are going to represent these different uh, items in your wall type. If, there, if there's something special that you want to have in here, make sure before you get to this point, you go and, uh, as the previous tutorial showed you, uh, create that material type and then you can apply it here. If not, it's no big deal. You can always hit OK and then go and create the material, then go back and edit this type and make it the material that you have just created. But in this case, every material that I'm going to use is already in Revit by default. So I'm going to start just on the inside and that's going to be my gypsum wall board. So I'm going to click in this material area and as you guys are familiar with, I'm going to click on this button and I'm going to come over here and type in gypsum and it'll return gypsum wall board. That's what I want to use. So I hit OK. You can see it changes it here. Uh, for my structure, my wood stud layer, what it used to be called is now just called softwood lumber. So I'm going to type in softwood and you can see here's the result, softwood lumber. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it changes it there. Uh, the next item that we're going to have is going to be the OSB, the Orient and Strand Board Sheeting. Uh, that would go on the outside uh, of the uh, stud layer. So I'm going to click on this. And this one's a little bit different. Whenever I search this one, uh, I click on, or I start typing in sheeting and hit enter. And by default, you, uh, the only reason it shows up for me is, oh, I'm sorry, this one will show up, the plywood sheeting. But if you look down here in these other materials, I'll make this, board, this uh, window a little bit bigger. If you look down here in these other materials, these are not actually in your project yet, but they are in the Autodesk Materials Library, and you can load it into your project just by clicking on them. So what we want is the oriented strand board, which is this item right here, and just because that's what's typical on the exterior of residential structure. So if we click on this and click on this little arrow, you can see it's now loaded into the project, and I can select it and use that as my material for that particular piece of structure. Um, for my membrane layer, I'm going to click in here and click on my material button and type in vapor because what they call it is a vapor retarder. It basically, as mentioned before, it just uh, doesn't allow wind and moisture to get into your house. Uh, so this is the material we want to use. We hit OK. And for your finish, as discussed, that's going to be up to you. Uh, I'm going to do siding, so I'm just going to type in here and type in siding. And now this one is the one that doesn't show any results by default, but it does do a uh, search in the Autodesk Materials Library, which you can choose from these uh, to use in yours. I'm just going to use Wood Shake. I think it looks nice. So if I click on that and load that into my project, you can see it's up here now. I can select it and hit OK, and now use that as my finish uh, material, which, as before, I already have set to half inch. And now I'm going to click OK. And you can see it, there's my exterior wall type. I click OK. And now I have a wall type that is called exterior wall. Uh, I already have these walls created. So if you guys already have the same, if I were to select this wall, you can see it still says generic 8. But I can very easily change all of my exterior walls to be the wall type that I just created. Uh, and I do so by selecting one of my generic 8-inch walls. And you can right click and say, select all instances in entire project. And when you do that, it selects all the generic 8-inch walls, which should be all your exterior walls in your project. Once they're all selected, I can come over to my properties and go down to the exterior wall, uh, wall type that I just created, select that, and it automatically updates and, cre and changes all my walls 
to be the type that I just created. And if I go to my 3D view and turn on realistic, you can see that it's gray on the outside and that siding material is actually on the inside. So I know whenever I made these walls, um, it's just kind of like a uh, one of the fluky things in Revit. Um, I basically made them backwards. And the way to fix that is really easy if you go back to your floor plan view. If you click on them, actually I'm going to click a chain of walls. So I'm going to hit tab to cycle through my selections. You can notice it says chain of walls there. I'm going to select now. And actually, I guess it doesn't let me do that. What I'm looking for is these arrows. I'm going to click on this. And the arrow should be to the outside. That represents the outside of those walls. So I'm just going to go through. I was hoping it would let me do all of them at once, but it's not. So I'm just going to do, go through one by one. It takes a couple extra seconds. And flip them all so that they're facing outward and now you can see that the exterior of my house is correct and the interior of my house is that gypsum wallboard and that's the look that I'm going for and if we switch back to a hidden line view um, that particular that siding material doesn't have a um, 2d graphic enabled so that's why it just looks plain but you do see it when it's in realistic view I'm going to go back to my floor plane view and very quickly make my other two wall types these two are easy because there's a they're a lot less involved and I'm going to do so just by clicking on one of my interior walls. And just like I did before, I'm going to go to Edit Type. I'm going to duplicate to make my own. And I'm going to call this one with my caps lock on Interior Wall. Hit OK. Just like before, I'm going to click under Structure. I'm going to go to Edit. And since this one, again, reference your typical wall construction handout, this one only has three items total. So I'm going to click Insert two more times. And this wall is going to consist of a stud layer and then two layers of drywall on either side. So the core boundary is just going to be around the stud layer. So I'm going to move this one up and move this one down. My function for the exterior, the drywall, is going to be our finish material. So I'm going to say finish one. It doesn't really matter if it's finish one or finish two. And this is structure, the stud layer. And just like before, I'm going to change the material to softwood. Hit OK. Change the material of my drywall to gypsum wallboard. Type it right. Hit OK. And the same on this side. The exterior interior side, by the way, doesn't really matter um, because they're both technically interior because it's an interior wall. I'm going to go over and change my thickness to a half inch for my drywall on both sides. And I'm going to change my stud layer to three and a half inches because interior walls are made by two by four studs, which the width thickness of a two by four stud is th actually three and a half inches. And neither of these are wraps, but my stud layer is structural, so I'm going to click this button here. And that's it. That's all the materials and items that are in your interior wall. You can see the total thickness of that is four and a half inches. I'm going to hit OK. There it is. Hit OK and now I have an interior wall type. Uh, now just like before I'm going to select my generic 5 inch wall I'm going to right click and select all instances in my entire project you can see it selects my interior walls I'm going to change that to my interior wall type which this is in alphabetical order again there it is and now those are all my interior wall type now the last type is um, going to be the barrier between your garage and your heated space, your heated house. Uh, and there, this is going to be very similar to your interior wall type, except that it's going to have a five and a half inch stud to allow for more insulation uh, so that you can, again, so you're not heating your garage. You're just keeping that heat inside your house. So I'm going to click on that wall. I'm going to go to edit type, duplicate, and I'm going to call this garage barrier. Spell it right. And under structure, click edit and I'm going to add my two materials again I'll move this one up I'll move this one down I'm gonna go through this one a little bit faster because uh, this is the third time you guys should be relatively oops I'm gonna make that five and a half inch like I just said you guys should be relatively versed in this to this point and my drywall I'm gonna have on either side again and I'll make that half inch these are not wraps. 
my stud layer is structural change my material to gypsum wallboard which is still selected from the last time I was there so I'll just do both of those quick